Hello, how are you now? Welcome to Nezo's Bad Shop. Uh, this is a, a chassis plate swap. We are swapping from what I call the YD2 Bendy Wendy plate. With the, it's called the uh, high traction uh, plate, I believe. And then I'm going to this one underneath, which is the new uh, uh, lightweight flex, I believe they call it. Uh, chassis plate. <clears throat> so we have Bendy Wendy here, and this is what I'm calling Flexi Lexi. And then, since I got this one, they've re released a third one, which is uh, narrow and puts the battery mount inline only. You can put the inline battery mount on this chassis if you want. I've set it up already as uh, lengthwise, side to side. This chassis plate comes with this uh, battery mount, which is pretty nice. And I'll get to that after I swap it. And, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. This chassis uh, that got this Bendy Wendy plate was a YD2 RX purple. That's why you see purple bits around it. Uh, rear motor. So, yeah. And, um, here we go. Make my life easy first by removing the shocks. Just from the lower arms. Because it does make life a lot easier. And, um, front shock tower is resting on a servo case, I think, or motor case, whatever, right now. Yeah, alright, so. If I stop talking, it's because I'm concentrating, but you are going to see the magic right here. Alright, my trusty uh, driver with locking clutch. And, alright. Trick with this is to keep the tow blocks. Uh, kind of together so the whole assembly doesn't fall apart and it really isn't too many screws the, the front bumper will come off the very last once I swap the plates uh, six screws up here uh, sorry two four six eight those will stay on and then two four six eight so 16 screws total all right here we go I'm gonna do the rear first First thing I'm going to do with the transmission. Yes. And Done a couple plate swaps like this. You just have to be careful and be mindful of what screws you're pulling out at certain times. And no need to rush them. You can take your time. If you have a second, uh, somebody can help you hold stuff, that helps too, but it can be done by one person. I thought about making a jig as well for this. Out of styrofoam or something. So to explain why I left or I disconnected the shocks from the lower arms is so that there's no whoa, there's no extra pressure on the lower arms once I release it from the chassis. You can see here, see how this is now drooping. This is all free, and I'm gonna try and not move it around too much. I'm gonna let it sit on the transmission. Okay, now for the front side, I'm gonna do the servo bulkhead first. And then, uh, actually, I'm going to do the front bulkhead. This is the front of the front bulkhead of the RX. Ooh, the rear of the chassis is loose, so i got to be careful. Okay. And now for the front toe blocks. Ugh, come on.
I'm gonna crack all these first. I mean, say I say crack because I do put a little Loctite on my cars, on every screw that goes into an aluminum or metal part. Rightly so. See, look, the back is uh, moving around here because I'm just trying to torque it out. I'll leave it for the visual. All right, now for the fun part of the front end, of the front uh, toe blocks. I mean, same thing as the rear. Just go slow. Let it drop down slowly. If you're using a if you're using a power driver like I am, battery. This is a battery powered Dewalt cordless. Because you don't want the whole sus see like what's happening right here. You don't want the whole suspension and everything to move around too much. And if you can go kind of quick, you can go. So my suspension has moved around a bit in the front end. You're gonna see this now. I'm gonna lift this right off and then swap it with this one. Ready? Oh, the front suspension fell down, but I think we're okay. All right, suspension, front suspension did fall, but it's still intact. Wow, pretty much mostly. Look at that. So I lost one spacer here. Just be very careful. Very careful. The trick now is to move the. I'm gonna hold this because it's gonna fall again. Actually, this has slightly come out of place. Hold on. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Ugh. This is the trick part. Uh, I wish it didn't fall. Yeah, part of it has kind of popped out of place, and that's going to be a slight issue. Hold on. Come on, come on. Which side it's not going into. Hold on. Come on, come on. There we go. Just had to pop it into place. Okay, so I'm going to hold the front end because it's moving around too much. Alright, here we go. See the rest of the chassis just held together by the upper deck? Alright, and place it on in its appropriate placings. Yeah, so I gotta move the front a little bit. Move the front suspension back a bit. Oh, don't come apart on me. Please don't come apart on me. Okay, so the trick is to get the screws in now. And you don't have to use power for this, but it does help. Um, hold on, I'm gonna use my driver because it's got a light on it and I have a magnetic tip. This is just to locate everything, so I can see what I'm doing. Oh my god. There's one. And that plate stayed in. Okay, I can leave it. Fun times. You gotta be patient with this though, you cannot rush this. So go opposite as well, you see what I'm doing? One, two. And you crisscross, so front to back crisscross, and that helps hold it in place so that you can um, <clears throat> put the other screws in. And oh, there we go. And that spacer is just moving around, but I will get it back into place. Yeah, I gotta, re I gotta reposition it because it, it's all, it's all wobbly. Oh, ding dang. We can do a little trick. Watch this. Since it's on the one side, just push it back straight. Because it's already locked in that other side. Oh, I say locked in. It's lined. I lined. And there it is. Now I've got my Torx screwdriver set here. Oh, don't knock the rear end around. Yeah, so what I'm going to do right now is not torque that because you saw what happened. It whipped the rear end around. If you're using a power driver, you got to be mindful of these things. But if you're using a manual, just a manual screwdriver, you're okay. So you see, front toe blocks are bolted in. I'm basically going to do the exact same now on the rear. Same process. The rear held. Ooh, I was about to say the rear held up nicely, and then I touched it, and it kind of popped apart. Oh, I just got to be careful of that. Oh, and don't lose my setting. Yeah, there we go. 
That's the setting. Back in there. There we go. Okay. Same thing, you can kind of hold it with uh, your hands if you want, like this. And uh, it's just, yeah, same thing, guiding the screws back in. Oops. Now, uh, I gotta move this a little bit more. Okay. Holding it together. There's one. And just be patient. You might have to try a couple times. I've also left to the opposite. I left the spacers, the one mil spacers you saw in the front. They were still sitting on the tow blocks, suspension mounts, these things. So that was uh, that was nice that they didn't fall off. Knock on wood here. There's that one. And and of course, one screw. One, two, three. I'm missing. I'm missing one. I probably knock one on the floor like I always do. One, two, three. How did I misplace a screw? Did I knock one on the chassis? This always, literally, always happens. Bad shop, you know. But, uh, oh, there it is. I got. I knocked it over. Okay. And that one. And away, away she goes. So that looks pretty good, even underneath my spacers didn't move. So, these are not tight, just FYI, these are not tight, I've just loosened them, uh, got them in loose, they're not even snug. I'm now going to uh, do the rear transmission, because now that the tow blocks are in, life is easy. Now that the tow blocks are in, the transmission and the front, uh, the front block is really easy, because now you can manipulate all the arms, like this, see? And it doesn't matter as much because everything else up top is still connected. The only thing that isn't is the shocks. It's just a matter of aligning the stuff here. So align the transmission. Come on, come on. One. Oh, and again, do the do the crisscross pattern just to get them in. I like doing that star pattern. And again, I am not torquing them down yet. Not yet. I want to get everything in. Uh, get in. Get it in their proper positions. Now, probably noticed I didn't put any Loctite back on any of these. And now here's the servo mount. I will go back and re-Loctite these one by one after the video but for demonstration purposes all you need is a little dab of the Loctite literally for stuff but for most of the chassis you don't need really any more than where's the camera there it is will this focus there can you see that blue there there we go see that blue that's really all you need just a dab on one side and it'll spread through because the more you put it'll cake and then bad things can happen but this is blue loctite and that, that'll be good it just helps everything stay together and literally as you screw it in it'll spread through the threads evenly and then away you go so I'll do the rest later but that was just for demonstration so you can see uh, how I loctite and yeah so everything's in now everything's in and loose so I can literally pick the chassis up and it's all one piece okay it's all one piece it's just loose so that's the plate swap, and now I'm going to torque everything down, but first I'm going to do transmission and then the bulkheads. Yeah, the servo mount and then bulkhead, and then the suspension mounts. Because this is going to be more, uh, that you do the transmission and the bulkhead so that the upper deck uh, is correct. Now what you're hearing here, this sound, that brrr, that's the locking clutch uh, cutting out at my setting of number 7 here on this particular thing. That's a good setting for, um, I found this gun, it's a good setting for setting pretty much 90 to 95% of the torque needed, and then I can just manually torque it in. So there's the transmission done, servo mounts now, one, two, and then the front bulkhead, oh, come on now, 
One, two. Since I'm in the front, I'm gonna do the front mounts now. One, two, three, four. Nice and free still. Always check to make sure nothing's blinding. One, two, three, four. Ta-da. The only other last thing is the front bumper. So right here. Uh, oh, this one, yeah. This is the, yeah. Okay, this one's on the RX. I gotta, there's a few extra pieces. There's a, an extra piece to take out there. This is a little bit, a little bit more work, but basically, It'll go um, in the front there, and then that's that, in the three. So you can see the difference. See the difference in the plates now, side by side? So there's that. And um, essentially that's finished. Those are the battery holders for this. That's how this one goes, the plastic battery holder. And um, this is now swapped. Because this is now a, oops, sorry, I kicked, I kicked the camera. Typical bad shoppery. And um, this is this is it. So it's, it's now a whole, back to assembled. Swappery. What was that? 10, 15 minutes roughly? So that's a car and all I gotta do is connect the shocks back up and then it's uh, good to go again. I guess gotta put electronics back in this car. I already have a servo in there, a Bad Shop Edition uh, servo. And um, I just gotta put electronics back in it to test this plate now. And uh, oh, the only other thing I wanted to show while I was here, the instructions that this comes with instructions this is how it's assembled and everything see instructions up here call for the shorty lipo battery the 1s size use only so down here it's saying use the 3500 yokomo or 93 millimeter and they give you adjustment as per the uh, installation on here um, and this is how it would install depending on the decks you can mount it inverted or side to side and uh, lengthwise whatever so i did the lengthwise now i have some batteries here to show you here's the yokomo 3500 Okay, right in, and with these holder tabs, right in, it's good to go. I've set it at 93 mil just for the most space because I have a couple different types of 1S size uh, lipo. One, heh, 1S size 2S lipo. What a mouthful. Uh, okay, so that's 3500 Yokomo. This is a 3700 Reeve D, the first gen, I think. Fits right in, and tabs go right over. A little bit of space because I set it at the 93 mil, um, so that's fine. I'm fine with that. It'll move a bit, but it won't matter that much. If it, if it upsets the car, I'll I'll adjust it. Um, so that's that. And just wanted to show the Yokomo 4600 because I did test fit this before I uh, shot uh, started recording. Now, it, uh, it. <laughs> Hold on. It does fit, there we go. It does fit, but it's it's like a real, real tight fit. She's tight like a toyga. But uh, it does fit, but you won't be able to use these latches unless you kind of extend some, you extend it a bit. But honestly, it's, it's really stuck in there. <laughs> I mean, with electronics, it might not stay like this, but it's, it's, it's not really gonna fall out, I don't think, easily. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show that off. Um, other than that, that's it, plate swap, done. And I'm uh, uh, going to test this tomorrow, because this is essentially Friday night right now, I'm filming this. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is a, an RX now converted with the new, uh, one of the new plates, the uh, lightweight flex plate. It's gone from the, uh, the, which one do they call this? The high traction, one of the high traction versions, I call it Bendy Wendy, but it's like way thin. I forget the official, the actual name for it, but this this one that's on this car now is called the the lightweight flex chassis, flexi lexi. So yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna try and do more stuff like this soon, and um, yeah, show off more kind of things like this. Maybe some how tos and stuff like that. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've got one of these, or you want, if you're thinking of getting one. Let me know. Uh, if you have any questions and go from there all right thanks for watching bye <laughs>